expect. First of all, Billy Graham has kicked out over the last 10 or 15 years, like 10 times, of uh, situations that we thought were near the end. I remember uh, his old agent, Scott Epstein, reaching out like, Scott, what a great guy Scott was. Remember Scott? Yeah, he was like, doesn't look good, Oliver, doesn't look good. You want to send a message. And I felt like it was every six months. Um, so I, and then he'd make a, a, an appearance at a, at a convention. So I was like, this is the greatest fucking promoter, Scott Epstein, in the world. He puts his client at death's door, <laughs> calls everybody in creation so it gets carried by the websites, and then he's at a convention. But, um, but anyway, so this was, this was really the passing of Superstar Billy Graham. And when you think back to the 70s superstar not the karate thing of the when he shaved his head and or even the comeback is it was a really flawed restart that mcmahon tried in the in the late 80s that template that he created with the blonde the the the, the tie dye the, i mean i'm sure jesse uh credits superstar right probably oh, very yeah. pu- very publicly but that template for the heel and and the, I think Superstar probably talked about Muhammad Ali as being as being an influence because it, it was so yeah, it was so it might have even talked on one of my shows to my head, but that template lasted. He was so one of a kind. You could maybe draw some comparisons to like Buddy Rogers, but I went I went it was through, charisma beyond Buddy. Yeah, Rogers. I went through and looked at it you know, because. When I moved uh, out to Phoenix, he was he lived way out in Avondale, and he had a little gym. And I went in there and I talked to him, and um, he was such a gracious and you know I, I think I was the IC champion at the time. And um, he asked me what I was doing out there, and I said I came out here to see you. You know, and I just kind of picked his brain and just sat there for a while and. Um, but I went, I went back and looked at some of his work. And Steve, I don't know if you can find this or not. I don't know if it's the garden, but it's him versus fucking Putzky. And they do it. They do like the, the tackle spot. And then fucking finally, you know, it, it just, it, you can just see Like his ability to, you know, to give. Like he, he wasn't afraid. He was a big motherfucker, man, but he wasn't afraid to, to be a heel. And he could have very easily been, you know, went the other way. But, of course, you know, back in those days. Right. There were, there were no tweeners, you know, because they're. You have to wonder the, um, the direction of the WWF at the time if senior didn't go with bob backland and what it went with with fucking because it was only a year he only let yeah superstar keep it was less than a year and then he went with bob for six look at, years look, look at the fucking Five. how look how small fucking his waist is man yeah we're like, looking at footage uh anyone listening of uh putski and superstar in the ring it is the garden and uh I remember on that. T- anyone who wants to watch something great, it, I think we have it up for free now. Steve, it's up for free, right? We said we were going to do this for free. At the um, Inside the Casey Vault on YouTube, um, we put up our timeline, our edition of Timeline with Superstar Grimm. And uh, <coughs> the link is youtube.com slash Casey Vault. And uh, it's, uh, he covers 77 and 78. He covers the title reign. From the day he was told he was going to get it, and he was going to beat Bruno, and lose it to Bob, and uh, dealing with Vince Sr., it's such a fascinating edition of the show. And I do want to reveal that that he was my inspiration for creating the Timeline series. I was listening on my iPod at the time, I guess, to a shoot interview with Superstar, and the person who was interviewing him asked about the title change. And he gave an answer, and then they moved on. 
He gave like a, you know, just a quick answer about it, and then they moved on. I was like, are you fucking kidding? I said, I could do. I'm standing there in my kitchen in the middle of the night, probably having cookies and milk or maybe a donut and milk in my drawers, and I became incensed. I was like, oh, my, I could do a whole show on just that year. And I said, you know what? I bet we could do a whole show with the right person on every year in the WWE. And that was the idea for Timeline. And then I eventually got it. He wasn't the first one we did, um, but I think he was like the fourth or fifth. We eventually got him in, and we did just the just the one of the best editions of that show. Once again, you know, watching the screen, you know, Graham has him in a fucking bear hug for four minutes, and then all he does is Putsky just, you know, takes him in the corner, rams him. Then they reverse the fucking. They now they just reverse it, and they've done nothing. I mean, they've done nothing. And the crowd's going banana. Yeah, it just. Granted, like I said, it's 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 a different era, but you know what? The, that, that that looks like two fucking men right there, man. You know, yeah. looks like, like a fight. I, yeah, that's that's some big old motherfuckers. But you, you you never see Putsky look small, and he looks, you know, he, he looks was I, the, the 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 kind of like the he he got much more defined and like like zero body fat in like the early eighties. This was when Putsky still had because Putsky was uh, was much more stocky when he first started. And yeah, this was kind of in that transition where he was. I think that I think that I think Superstar was so fucking. Uh, I mean, that was the look. He had, like, there was no way, you know, there's a reason why there's that world famous picture of, of Arnold working with, with uh, Superstar posing because it was just like, man, he's the real fucking deal. God, I would have kept a strap on him for five years and just had people chase. Fuck yeah, man. He, he had it all. He, he talked. I mean, there's no reason not to have him front and center. Amazing. But, um, Obviously, he was too much of a man. Billy was uh, Billy was one of the guys that became pretty vocal. Yeah, about steroid abuse, and he didn't keep the conversation just about himself. He he uh, made a lot of accusations about the WWE um, and uh, the availability of steroids and. Um, that kind of made him a pariah at the time, but uh, there's no denying the effect he had and what that superstar Graham template became for guys like Jesse and okay, I, I bet Flair could even probably would even credit him. He didn't he didn't go the bodybuilder route, but certainly I think, I think that he, he was more Buddy Rogers, Rick. Yeah, yeah, he he's probably closer to the Buddy Rogers, but I mean, yeah. you see a lot of Buddy Rogers in 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 Billy. I think that was just that that era of you take you know a cup of wrestler, you know, and, and that's what they all had was that cup of wrestler, and then you added you know the different things. So I mean, I just think that that was. The wrestler of that era was, you know, a lot of guys with the the, the, the the bleach blonde hair, and you know, it's one of the things is that that I'm surprised is, I guess, because we take so many fucking pills, um, that we, we that we die before we we, we get uh, skin cancer. But you know, being a <laughs> being a pro wrestler, man, you gotta. I mean, I, I'm sure now because they've got. You know, spray like on Magic Mike, they spray tanned us, and uh, they had this uh, spray tan. Felicia was the lady that that spray tanned us, and she had a product that, it, like, she would spray you, and like, it, if you were a darker complexion person, like I'm American Indian, uh, I would I would get dark, like I would, I would get darker than most of the other guys. Like Joe would get dark, but I would always get a couple of coats because I was just like, you know, fuck it. I've been on stage before bodybuilding, so I was going to make sure I'm in no hurry not to have good color. So, 
Um, bring that quote up from Flair. We do have a, uh, a tweet that Flair sent out upon that. It says, so sad to hear about Billy Graham's health. Make no mistake. Talk about the influence he made on me and so many others. Hulk, Dusty, etc. You're beautiful. Bonnie dyed my hair in 1972. Stay strong, my mentor. FYI, you and Dusty Rhodes were my heroes. You made me. That's beautiful. That's really yeah. nice. That uh, Flair posted that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Superstar Billy Graham? Yeah. I do, too. You think it's one of those things? Like, you remember where you were? Everyone remembers the first time. I don't remember the first time I saw Hulk Hogan, honestly. I remember I I, the first time I saw a superstar. I, 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 saw, I saw him at Joe Lewis. I saw Hulk at Joe Lewis. Working. But even on TV, do you, do you remember the first time you saw a superstar Billy Graham? No. I saw Hulk. The first time I saw Hulk was on Ron, Ron Rocky. Right. I'm, I'm, I, think, I saw him in the ring before that. I mean, the, the, I the 1980 did. run, his yeah. heel run, I remember. I never, I never saw him. But superstar. I, 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 I was watching basketball. Super, <laughs> superstar Billy Graham was the first. It was on the first broadcast I ever saw. I was over at a friend's house, and his my friend's brothers were watching wrestling on a big black and white TV, like six o'clock on a Saturday night, Channel Nine, New York TV, on a big black and white TV, and he had a match. I was like, "What? They're kicking the fucking shit out of each other!" And then he cut the promo. He looked right into the camera and through my soul and told me what he was going to do to whoever. I don't remember the promo, but I just remember going, holy shit. It was like nothing I'd ever seen. That was right. professional wrestling. That was what professional wrestling was supposed to do and did, if it was effective, to the viewer. It was the, the simulated violence, but then the character that you would never run into on a street corner. Unless maybe you were in Detroit talking to a few pimps, you could probably yeah. run into a Billy Graham type in a full length leather coat. No, he was he was he was fucking he was very special. He was amazing. He was amazing. 